All right, preppers, on a scale of one to 10, how equipped is your vehicle to get you through an emergency situation? What do I mean by an emergency situation? Maybe something as trivial as a skin knee or a blown out front tire, or it might be 20 degrees in winter and you need to have clothing in your car if you need to abandon your vehicle to go home. Or your car might become a temporary means of shelter for one hour or even up to 24 hours. In this video, we're gonna cover exactly what you should be carrying in your car or truck or van or whatever you drive to survive any emergency situation. Stick around, this is gonna be a great video. What's up preppers, I'm the Community Prepper. Today we got a good one. We are gonna go over everything that you should be storing in your vehicle for survival. Now, I'm gonna break this video into two parts. The first part is going to be just me explaining exactly what I have in my truck. The second part, if you wanna stick with me through there, is going to be me picking apart every part of my truck as to where I store everything. So, it's up to you how long you wanna watch this for. Stay tuned. Lots of people neglect to realize that they have a huge storage container on wheels that they have with or near them a great majority of the time. It's actually quite amazing how much gear, tools, supplies you can fit in your trunk, behind your seats, in your glove box. Side note, put a pair of heavy duty gloves in your glove box. Prepping your car for the unexpected will likely mirror your bug out bag. Remember a bug out bag is a pack you have ready when you need to leave your home at a moment's notice. Your car inventory should be based on the same principles of what you have in your bug out bag. You may further factor in the pillars of prepping into your inventory, which is food, water, shelter, fire, communication, medical, security, gear, sanitation, and mobility. The redundancy of keeping a car inventory serves two purposes, to get home if you need to abandon your vehicle or to bug out with just the clothes on your back and the supplies in your car. You may not always be at home when you need to bug out. And as they say in prepping worlds, one is none, two is one. All right, let's talk about a car bag. Unlike a bug out bag, weight will not really matter. The thing that you wanna pay attention to is when you take your bag, you're gonna stock it full of the equipment that you most likely will need to take with you if you need to abandon your vehicle. Now that's gonna be some food, some water, and not a gallon of water, a couple of these, because uh, a gallon of water is what, 8.4 pounds, something like that? You're gonna grab two of these, and then you're gonna to try to procure water as you're traveling home if need be. Procuring it from a stream with a life straw or Sawyer type filter, going to like an industrial park and having a Silcock key to open up the spigot to fill up your water bottles. Um, so you're gonna wanna pack it uh, logistically so that if you need to, like I said, leave your vehicle, you're gonna have a pack to get home. If it's not in your pack, the rest of your gear is gonna be strategically stored in your vehicle. And there is so much room in the trunks, in the flatbeds, under the seats, in the glove compartments, center consoles, and behind my seats. When I show you the list of everything that I have packed in my truck, I'm gonna pop it up on the screen right now. Take a look at all that. You can screenshot it if you want. Taking that all in, that's a lot of stuff. And I have plenty of room in my truck for myself and passengers. Before we get too far into this video, we're gonna talk about vehicle maintenance. Basic vehicle maintenance, like changing your oil, making sure your fluids are up, making sure you have proper pressure in your tires, keep up on that stuff. Because if your car breaks down and you most need it, it's just gonna turn into a 3,000 hunk of metal. I also do preemptive maintenance on my truck. Every about three years, I change the battery. I'll, even if it's working, I'll take it out, drop it off at the shop, get a new one, pop it in. I've been three times in my life where my battery has died and it's put me out. Um, it's always gonna happen at the most inconvenient time. 
So it could screw your day up and it's a lot easier changing out your battery preemptively than having to wait for a tow truck or walk to a shop and swap it out. All right, putting it all together. You're gonna start making a list. You're gonna start filling your car with all the survival gear that you need. Now, does that mean everything? No, obviously you're not gonna store gasoline in your car or propane cylinders in your car or any other toxic materials that can violate your space and make you sick, ill, or die while you're driving. However, my advice is to store as much as humanly possible in your vehicle. There's really no such thing as overkill because like I said, this is doing the heavy lifting for you, not these. So it doesn't matter if you have five gallons of water in your car. And we're gonna talk about water as our number one prep for getting your car ready. All right guys, water. Looks like a lot of water, right? Well, it is, it's over two gallons. I have all of this in my truck at all times. They go in the door panels in the front and the back on each side. They go in the center cup holder. They go right behind my center console. And this sucker either goes on my chair next to me or on the floorboards. Now, storing a lot of water is great because again, you don't have to haul it with you. The truck's doing the hard work. I'm gonna say that a hundred times in this video. This thing is awesome. BPA free. BPA is a chemical that they uh, put into some plastics or plastics have that can seep into your food and your water. So make sure you get a BPA stuff. These aren't really BPA free. What I do with these is if I stop somewhere and I go, you know, for a walk or whatever, take one of these, put it in my pocket, drink it, chuck the bottle. And then when I get home, I replace the bottle in where I took from. So I also have a system. It's not super critical, but I always take from this side first, second, third, fourth, the other door, fifth, sixth, back door, sixth, seventh, center console, seventh, eighth, and cup holder, ninth. This thing I usually go through in about one or two days, so I'm always swapping this out and cleaning it. So that's water, get your waters in check. All right, guys, we're gonna talk about food. We all get hungry. So the food that I carry in my car, basic necessities. I have a lot of protein bars and I got two MRE meals. Now, I probably have six or so protein bars and six or so uh, Cliff Energy bars. And I also have um, some uh, liquid IV, some, it's got electrolytes. And of course, some whey protein, protein, just uh, 20 grams of whey protein. So you're gonna cover with your food, your fats, your carbohydrates, and your protein. Now, MREs, they don't last forever. They don't last forever, especially if they're in a hot car. So what I do is, if I have MREs in my truck and it's summer and it gets up to 110 or whatever in there, every maybe two months, I'll just swap these out. I'll eat it. I'll eat one. You know, they're like eight, nine bucks each. I'll make two meals out of it and I'll replace it so I know what I have in my car is good. You might need energy to get home. You might need to abandon your car and then throw this in your bag. Now this probably weighs about five pounds. It's not a whole lot to lug around um, when you need to throw your car bag on and start hoofing it home. So guys, this is your food, get it in check. All right, guys, next is shelter and clothing. Now your primary means of shelter is going to be your car. It's the safest environment you can be in. If you're out in an SHTF scenario, if it's bad weather, raining, snowing, cold, hot, whatever, you can rely on your car windows up doors closed. You're safe as kittens. Now, if you don't want to sleep in your car and you're next to some woods, you can grab a hammock. Pick this up at Costco, holds uh, two people. It's a two person hammock, holds my fat butt. Um, and I also have a tarp. I have a 10 by 12 foot tarp. And what I could do is hang the hammock between two trees and then make a rain fly over the tarp. That would be some good shelter. Also, I do have a wool blanket in my car. I have extra clothing that'll keep me warm in most temperatures. I mean, in San Diego, it's really not extreme temperatures uh, as far as cold goes, but you know, a good night's sleep, especially if you're gonna be hoofing it, is gonna be important. So instead of being freezing all night, make sure you got that clothes, the blankets, and uh, the proper shelter, clothing and shelter to sustain you. All right, guys, next is fire. Fire is an important but an easy one to do. Buy a lighter, buy 10 lighters. Put lighters in your glove compartment. Put lighters in your drawer at home. 
put lighters in your bug out bag, put lighters in your car bag. I carry a lighter in my pocket all the time. I haven't smoked since cigarettes were under $2 a pack. I carry a lighter in a little metal case so I don't depress the uh, gas and it all goes out in my pocket. We don't want to be bare grills running around in the woods trying to light a fire with sticks and rubbing them and sparking with a ferro rod. Take the struggle out of fire, carry a lighter. It's the best, easiest thing to do. <clears throat> Next guy's communication and intel. Of course, cell phones. It's gonna be your main communication uh, tool. But what if you're out of service? What if your cell phone's dead? What if the grid goes down? Second means, I mean, you could do uh, SOS flashing your lights. Maybe somebody will see you, a plane, a person, you know, driving at a distance. But um, the best thing you can do is always keep your cell phone charged. You know, have some battery power banks in your car as well to charge your equipment. Secondary, you could always get like a ham radio, Bofang radio. Buy a Bofang radio, watch a YouTube video about how to program it. Do the simple programming of your local area, the weather, the emergency channels. And if you need to contact somebody with that Baofeng radio, technically you do need a ham license. But if your life is in jeopardy, I would take the ticket or the fine or whatever and try to communicate and get someone to save my stranded butt if uh, my phone and other means of communication do not work. Also a Baofeng radio, it will have uh, good information on gathering sorry, gathering information on the local emergency you might be fleeing from or stuck in, in your vehicle. So intel and communication, you guys are in the military, you know wars are won and lost on intel and communication. So have your phone and have a backup to your phone, Baofeng Radio, you can pick one up for like 40 bucks, learn to program it and stick it in your car. That's All right guys, next we're gonna talk about health and fitness, that kind of is one category. I consider the health aspect of, you know, one, being healthy, being able to walk two, three, four, five miles if you need to, being able to take on some manual labor that would other otherwise be taken care of for you if you had mobility by a car or power tools or anything like that. This goes beyond a car thing, but get in shape. You don't have to be Arnold freaking Schwarzenegger. Just go walk every day, walk two miles. You're gonna find that if you need to walk and you're carrying this gear and you've never trained for it, you're in for a world of hurt. The other part of medical is I have a medical bag that I do keep in my truck. Now, this is a little above and beyond what most people might do, but I, um, I kind of uh, am a little bit obsessive about prepping. So my medical bag has everything for pretty much every ailment. Now, I'm not talking about doing open heart surgery. I'm talking about splinting a broken arm. I'm talking about maybe a skin stapler to, to uh, sew a wound up, uh, Tums if you got a bellyache, uh, eye drops if you have allergies, uh, Tylenol if you have a headache. So I've gone and put together a bag. I'll probably do a video in the future about this bag because I really did a lot of research and I never found anything online that was a complete medical kit that I thought was good. Instead, I built it myself. I mean, Everything from moleskin for, for blisters on your feet to a, uh, a splint to wrap up an arm to, uh, what was this? Ah, a cold compress. So I have everything in this bag. And the best thing is I have a sheet here that I'm going to put up on the screen. Here's magic. And it shows you every single thing that I have in my medical bag. And on the back of it, I have a directory, what acetaminophen is for, what benzocaine is for, what lidocaine is for, what aspirin is for, what dipenthethabrida is for, zinc oxide, hydrocortisone. Everything is listed on here so that I need to refer to, hey, do you have a, you know, I, I got a, a bellyache, do you have Pepto-Bismol? Well, yeah, I have it on here and I have the inventory on here. And on the back, I have what Pepto treats. So again, I, it's a little above and beyond, but I have actually used this bag a lot. I've been out at uh, the beach and somebody passed out hiking and I did some of their vitals and I gave them some, uh, some food and I gave them some water with uh, electrolytes in it. It's got electrolytes. And um, 
it helped them. They probably had a mild heat stroke or something like that or low blood sugar. Either way, something as simple as that can really, you know, save the day if, uh, or make your day a little bit more enjoyable if you, if you have a headache or a cut or something like that. So that's medical bag. I'm going to go and do a video about this soon, but put some medical supplies in your car, at least at the minimum, Tylenol, aspirin, Benadryl, uh, just stuff to, to treat ailments that are common. Uh, all right, security's next. Security is a pillar of prepping, but how does security relate to your car? Well, your car is going to act as a security defense from mobs of people, from weather, from whatever. Roll the windows up, close the doors and lock them. You have a room that is hard to break into. If people are determined, yeah, they'll smash a window but that's when your secondary security skills come in and that is learning open-handed skills. Uh, sometimes run foo is the best thing to do, just get the hell out of the situation. Secondary, if you need to defend yourself, go hands-on, have tools, have pepper spray, have baseball bats, have brass knuckles, have firearms. Again, check with your state's laws if you can carry all these things. Brass knuckles and a baton, like a police expandable baton, is actually a felony charge here in California. Um, having a loaded weapon on you is a misdemeanor. That's a head scratcher. I, I don't understand it. But we are our own keepers. You watch the news. Everyone who watches this channel is probably very well aware of rampant criminality in this society and free fall right now. I don't want to go off on a tangent here, but you see it on the news. You see crazy people just beating people up in the streets, no reason unprovoked guy with a hatchet in McDonald's the other day, you know, they let him out of jail in 24 hours. We need to take our own safety into our hands. And I'm not saying vigilante stuff. I'm saying have your head on a swivel, practice your situational awareness skills, get open-handed skills, and learn how to defend yourself and your family from the crazies that are out there. So, all right guys, now we're gonna talk about tools and gear. Now tools and gear, is fun and when you're loading up your vehicle in it weight again doesn't matter because what it's going to do the heavy lifting for you so you can overstock your vehicle with as much gear and tools as you want it's really fun to just have everything from pry bars and saws and axes and uh i don't know tire jacks the screwdrivers uh a multi-tool you know like like something with scissors and pliers and all that uh flashlights so go nuts this is the fun part but again, learn your gear, learn your tools. If you don't know how to change a tire and you get, you get uh, stuck or, or you got a flat on the road, you're gonna call AAA. If AAA is not there, you're gonna have to do it yourself. When's the last time any of you guys have changed a tire? I changed one two years ago when my tires got slashed because of my uh, thin blue line sticker on the back of my truck. So um, uh, that's another story, another rant I'm not gonna get into. but. Get your gear, get your tools, learn your gear, learn your tools. Let's move on. All right guys, sanitation and hygiene. It's an easy one. Take your body from head to toe. Hair, what do you need for your hair for sanitation and hygiene? I don't know, maybe a comb. What do you need for your eyes for sanitation and hygiene? Maybe eye drops, maybe, uh, I don't know, contact lenses, glasses. That's not really sanitation and hygiene, but it's just another thing to prep for. Ears, do you have Q-tips? Mouth, okay, mouth. You need toothbrush, you need toothpaste, dental floss. You need maybe chapstick. Go down the line, your fingernails. You need nail clippers. Keep going down the line. Get a toiletries bag and everything that I just mentioned, yeah, they're small. Eye drops are small. Nail clippers are small. Toothbrush, toothpaste. You can buy a little travel one at Walmart. Put it in a toiletries bag, stick it in your car bag, and that's it. It's easy. Now, go in bathroom, yeah, let's address that. So there are those little coin toilet paper things. You've probably all seen them. They're like compressed towelettes. You put a drop of water on them, they expand, and you get like a 10 by 10 towel. Gonna pause for the plane. All right, plane's gone. So the 10, the little coin pressed towelettes, you put a drop of water on them, they expand to a 10 by 10 sheet or whatever it is. Do your business, do that, bury it in a hole. Remember, these things aren't flushable, so don't go flush them down your toilet. They'll clog the crap out of your uh, septic tank or, or your, um, your pipe, so don't do that. Sanitation, hygiene, easy. Let's move on to the next one. All right, guys, the final pillar of prepping that we're gonna talk about as it relates to your car's mobility. Obviously, your car is mobile. Your car is gonna get to where you're going. 
That's when we talked about earlier, checking your brakes, checking your tires, making your fluids are up. You're going to rely on your truck. It's going to break down on you when you need it the most. It's Murphy's Law. Second mobility is going to be the Shoe Leather Express. Like we talked about before, be in shape to walk a few miles. Have good uh, socks and shoes in your car because if you've ever walked in high heels, ladies, some men, or uh, you know, work shoes, they're not made for hoofing it five miles. They're made for looking nice at the office or the club or whatever. So make sure you store a good set of either tennis shoes, ideally probably hiking shoes, um, socks or wool socks. Wool socks are good in the cold. It's also good for wicking moisture. So your footwear is gonna be essential for your mobility. So you got your car, you got your feet, and you need your health to do all this. In a perfect world, I would have this truck behind me with an awesome off-road motorcycle in the back. So when this guy breaks down or I hit gridlock traffic or I need to go off-road, I pop the bike out and I go mobile. Um, mobility could be a bike, um, a scooter even, those little zigzags or zipper, zipper scooters the kids ride. You know, if you want to make it easy on yourself, throw one in the flatbed, whatever. Yeah, it's silly, but it's a lot easier to zip down a hill than to walk down the hill. So think about mobility. Think about your, your ways of mobility, your ability for mobility, and your equipment for mobility, like your shoes and socks. All right, that's it for mobility. All right, guys, in summary, in summation, summarize, there's no such thing as a perfect prep, but doing a little bit will go a long way. I could honestly say I've used the preps in my car more than any single prep that I prep. Does that make sense? I have been out and about where I needed food, where I needed water, where a guy, a parking lot attendant last week when it was 95 degrees here in San Diego, sweating his ass off, I gave the kid a bottle of water, you know? I, I've used my medical bag for stuff. I've uh, ripped the shirt while out and I have a extra t-shirt in my truck that I just put on, it's easy. Just, just start prepping for your car and before you know it, you're, you're gonna be set. You're gonna be really well off and you're gonna be driving around with more confidence saying, oh, I don't have to run home to get that now. Oh, I forgot my glasses at home. No, you got an extra pair in your car. So guys, prep your car and refuse to be a victim. Thank you very much for watching. All right, guys, let's put all of this stuff away. First thing we got is two t-shirts, pair of shorts, wool blanket, fix a flat, a tie down, a sweatshirt, two flashlights, and a shovel. All right, behind the rear seat, we we're gonna put this stuff in like so. No, I wanna lay this down flat. Shovel lays down flat. These go on top of it. Flashlights. Then we got shorts and sweatshirt. I got two rolled up t-shirts. And then this sits there and it closes just fine. Next, we're gonna go under here. So under here, I have jumper cables and a few more ratchet tie downs. This is what's going to go under this seat. I just lay these out flat, batteries, double A and triple A, road flares, and uh, a tire plug kit. So that stays like that, and that goes down flat. Let's go over here. Okay, on this side of the car, I do have a gas mask with a filter. That goes there. This is my jack and my uh, wrench for the wheels, lug wrench. We'll close that up. And then, remember these? Road Atlas. Hey, what if your phone doesn't work? I lay that down there, pull the seatbelt up. Boom. That's so far the back seat. I do. I do have a full size fire extinguisher. I have a pair of underwear. I have a pair of long johns. Put them there. I have an extra pair of socks. I have an extra pair of jeans. 
and then I have a towel for the beach or for drying off and then that fits all behind there back here I keep the sunshade and I keep dog bones I feed the dogs sometimes when I see them especially the strays or the people with the homeless the homeless people with the dogs let's go over there and do that back seat pouch right here in this back seat pouch I keep extra cords for my headphones when I go to the gym if uh, Bluetooth breaks down whole bunch of bungee cords and then the inventory to everything that I have in my truck I put it back there the back seat is completely done as you can see I have water here water here on both sides let's go to the front seat okay what do I keep in my glove compartment I keep my registration and insurance up here in my glove compartment I have some more electrolytes and whey protein just stick that in there some tissues some wet wipes trees in the mirror so my car won't smell more trees I keep a pad of paper in here a tire pressure gauge I do keep another light yes I love my flashlights and then I keep my food and I keep Let's see, I have a lighter, I have Tums, I have a rag, I have lens wipes, Advil, aspirin, Benadryl, earplugs, and my chargers for my flashlights on my everyday carry, my pocket and my keychain. Put that in there, fits fine. Gallon of water sits on the floor. Water here, water here, and water on the other side. Let's keep going. All right, these are the bags. This is my car bag. This is my medical bag. This is a set of towing straps in case I need to pull or be pulled out of a ditch. I usually keep those right here on the floor. Not very often I have people riding in my back seat. If I do, I will take the bags and put them in the flatbed just for the duration of the ride. My medical bag goes here, right in the center, and my go bag car bag goes here now here's the important part gentlemen you don't want to get in a car accident and be killed by your preps so what I do is I go around and through and I buckle it and then I take this carabiner and do that so these will not become missiles if I get in an accident well the only thing we have left to go through are the MRE meals and then uh, my center console this is a lock that I keep here locked at all times in case I ever need a cable lock let's go check out the front well let's put these away these are in the back seat I just put them underneath my seat no problem let's go to the front now we're in the front seat <sighs> where do we start where do we start oh we just have a few more things I have my iPod for music. I keep a watch here. I keep some breath mints and a whole bunch of change in there. Probably $20 worth of change. Now here's the fun one. This is my center console. Flossers. Two more flashlights. Listerine. Set of handcuffs. Why do I carry handcuffs? Because I'm a CCW holder and if I ever need to draw my gun on someone and they immediately comply, I would make a citizen's arrest. And I'm not gonna sit there and wait for the police with my knee in his back for 25 minutes. So that's why I carry handcuffs. Pair of scissors, sunscreen, pens, a comb, a multi-tool, medicine, extra magazine. I know, don't keep bullets in a hot car, but hey, my EpiPen deodorant um, and then I carry two power banks right there and that's pretty much it so I put these back here what else can we talk about that's pretty much it now I got sunglasses here and an extra pair of sunglasses there up here I have nothing and let's go through here registration and insurance lens wipes for my glasses 
US Constitution. So guys, that's pretty much everything that I keep in my vehicle. I hope you got something out of this. And if you did, like, subscribe, comment below. Let me know what phase of your car prepping, automobile prepping you're in. And as always guys, refuse to be a victim. Yeah.